It's mailbag time. I am your host, James Yoder, taking your questions, diving into what's on you guys' mind around this Michigan football program, back-to-back Big Ten championships, back-to-back dominating wins over Ohio State, and potentially the most exciting Michigan football team coming back into a season that I can remember hell. I mean, it's going to be an exciting one. The team is stacked on offense and defense. Losing some guys, of course. Uh, Jake Moody uh, could be a big uh, you know, big hurt next year, but I am super pumped about this year. So use hashtag Michigan or Super Chat to get your live questions answered. First question coming in from JJ's dad's hands. Who are these people? I get that. You guys saw the thing in the TCU bowl. I think it was a mistake, by the way. I, people are trying to say like he grabbed JJ's girlfriend's butt or like kind of pinched her or something like that. I think it was more like this. He went for five and she didn't do it. And these very narrow seats, I think he kind of just put his hand down to like make sure she didn't like bump into him or something like that. I don't think it was a nefarious act, but nevertheless, uh, I don't think this is a legit account either way. But I like your opinion. Where does 2003 rank in terms of preseason hype in your time? as a fan so we saw this question earlier i sent jack uh producer jack aka young harbaugh my list on the down low right after we got this question earlier on in the show so before we show the list i want to premise this right i put this in as of my lifetime and i'm just saying as far as i can comprehend i'm just gonna say 1995 to present so 26 27 28 years um what i feel like the most external non-michigan fans internal michigan fans and then Talent coming back, proven talent, what they've already done, not what we're expecting them to do, they've already done the top five most hyped Michigan football teams over the last 25, 26 years. Here is my list. All right. 2023, this is the most hyped. You have a five-star returning quarterback. You've got the best running back combo the Big Ten's ever seen returning into one season. Uh, One of the top five, I think, really honestly, in the history of college football of proven talent, proven stats, right? They got 2007, right? Michigan started 11 and 0. Um, lost to Ohio State, lost to USC. Then you had Henny, Hart, four-year starters, Mario Manningham, uh, the number one pick in the draft the, the prior, the following year, Jake Long, and uh, pretty good defense, Sean Crable and some others. They lost a few guys, uh, Lamar Woodley, but that was a disaster season. They ended up with four losses, but ended up beating Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow at the end of the year. Um, lost to App State, of course, and we're going to start the year. 2018 season, right? Why was it so hyped? You had 10 starters returning on defense. As we get a super chat coming in from Jacksonville, Zoe, we'll get that to you in just a second, Jacksonville. Appreciate you. 2018 season, a uh, ton of guys coming back at defense, uh, Devin Bush and others, but Shea Patterson, right? Five-star quarterback. I think that's the only thing missing in the 2017 season to pair with Diamond Peoples-Jones, to pair with um, you know, Michigan's wide receiver core that was kind of you know, high-rate Tariq to, to Black and others. 2000 season, Drew Henson, David Terrell, um, Marquise Walker, the the A train, Anthony Thomas. Tom Brady took him to a 11 and 2 season the year before. Sh- uh, Sugar Bowl win over uh, Orange Bowl win, I'm sorry, over Alabama. And you think, okay, wow, Tom Brady, he was okay, but now we got superstar Drew Henson with basically the same offense. That was a hype team. End up with three losses, and then you go back to the 2005 season, right? Why is that an interesting one? Um, you had a true freshman. Uh, Chet Henney, true freshman Mike Hart as your backfield quarterback, running back. And then you had Steve Breston. You had uh, Jason Avant coming back as the wide receivers. You lost Bill Edwards, okay, but you had a stacked team. You had Ernest Shazer, uh, Marlon Jackson on the defense side of the ball. It was an absolutely stacked team, but 2005, that was uh, a struggle bus as well for Michigan, right? They started off at one point, I think they were like 3-3 three and three, uh, in the middle of October. They really struggled, ended up with the five lost year. So those hype teams, haven't always turned out the best. Go back to it one more time really quick, Jack, if you can for me. Just want to kind of recap those teams, uh, the top five most hyped teams of a Michigan football program of my lifetime. The last 26, 27 years have been falling. So you 2017, four loss. 2018, uh, two loss. You started off, I guess it ended up being three losses. Lost to Notre Dame, but that was probably the best of the other four, right? You won 10 games, went to Ohio State, ranked number four, lost that game, lost the bowl game. 2003 lost year, although Michigan was up in double digits uh, on all three of their losses at some point. And then 2005, five lost teams. So those are the most hyped. Who am I missing? Let me know who I'm missing, guys. If I missed one of those teams, uh, one of the years most hyped from 99, 5, 96 till now, let me know in the comments and the live chat. But I'll ask you guys this question as well. Will Michigan be ranked preseason number two? I think it's general consensus. Georgia will be the preseason number one. Will Michigan be ranked number two? I think it's a foregone conclusion. I think because Alabama... And Clemson 
don't really return powerhouse teams or starting quarterbacks. Ohio State doesn't return a starting quarterback. Um, I don't know who else they can put there, although Alabama sometimes is just the default, but I think Michigan will get credit for what they've done the past two years and the fact they've got this stacked team and a starting quarterback returning who really came into his own down the stretch, not to mention Blake Corum, who for most of the season was the Heisman Trophy favorite. Why for yes and for no? I think everybody in the live chat is saying yes across the board except for uh, Mitch Kappa says no, and then Tim Baker says number one is no. They're going to be number one. Go Blue Bosa, 2007 most hyped team from A Train 132. Yep, that's the Appalachian State year. Completely agree there. We had a super chat come in, $10 from Jacksonville. So he says, have you heard anything about the three-star defensive line commit from Wisconsin? I believe his last name is Howard. Um, I haven't. Um, I don't know, Jack, if we can, what am I missing there on Howard? Um, I haven't, so I've decommit from Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, haven't yet. Um, maybe it may ring a bell though, but I kind of, you know, over the last two months since signing day, who's it? Jamel Howard. Um, I haven't heard anything objectable though. So let me make this deal for you. Since you super chat $10, I'm going to get you on the hard hat here. Another one. You've been multiple time there. So appreciate you there. And I will look into it. If you want, uh, if you want, you can uh, put your Twitter in there. I'll DM you. Uh, if anything, I'll re reach out to my recruiting guy, see if we know anything. But as of Jumping on this live show, I don't have anything, so I don't want to BS you and tell you information that, honestly, I just don't know. It hasn't been a name that's kind of crossed my uh, my desk over the past two weeks. So, Jacksonville Zoe, $10 Super Chat. You are – I get the last guy. I think I'm retiring this helmet, Jacksonville Zoe, so I'm putting you right up there on the top with Decap, with John Blaze. Um, no, I don't want to put there because I will block somebody else. Now, I, I think I just got to do it right there. You are up there. I just got to write on top of – uh, G calendar, I gotta kind of, you gotta, you're, you're getting two stickers there, and then John Blaze. Sometimes when you go over a sticker, you gotta write over stickers. Jack and Zoe, uh, put your Twitter account or DM me on Twitter. I'll get you some information by this time tomorrow. All right, guys, the Michigan Football Report is sponsored by Athletic Greens. Folks, I take AG1 every day. It's made a truly uh, made a difference in my overall health and well-being. You can get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That link is down in the comments, description, and in the live chat coming up on today's video. I've been using AG1 for a while now. I can confidently say it's improved my overall health and wellness. Not only does it provide comprehensive nutrition, but also helps me feel more energized and focused throughout the day. I start my mornings with AG1 and it's become a habit that I look forward to every day. Furthermore, AG1 is an excellent supplement for recovery, and it's a habit that I include before and after my workouts. It makes me feel like I'm on the same level of those Michigan football athletes that I admire, and it motivates me to strive for greatness like they did these past two seasons beating Ohio State. AG1 is, the, is easy to use, and it's very cost-effective, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. All you have to do is mix one scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing in the morning. If you're looking for a comprehensive solution for your supplement routine, then give Athletic Greens a try. They've got something exciting for you folks. With your first purchase, you'll receive a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports and take advantage of this offer. It's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Uh, gotta go to that link. It's in the comments in the description and we'll get it here in the live chat of today's video. Athletic Greens dot com slash chat sports get your package vitamin d one year supply and five free travel packs when you get going uh don't forget the link down in the comments description and the live chat of today's show becky and chad come in with the question he says why did taylor upshaw transfer i don't know i don't know the answer why did taylor upshaw transfer um I, you know did did josiah stewart coming in did that kind of uh spook him a little bit because Yabiyoki transferred. He's at Charlotte now. Um, I don't know the answer. Um, maybe he's just looking for something different. Maybe he doesn't think he has an NFL future and he saw some sort of short-term payday with Colorado, but um, it's an interesting one. Uh, I wish I had a better answer for you, Becky and Chad. I was surprised when I saw that uh, that he transferred. Uh, he was making plays on the stretch for Michigan, right? He was a contributing player and would have been certainly in the two deep, if not a starter, or at least, you know, a uh, uh, every other down kind of player this year in that 2D rotation, but wish him the best with uh, his endeavors. But it was a shocker to me that he was one of the guys that decided to enter the transfer portal. Question coming in from Younger Harbaugh. Is this your, is this your son, Jack? I think it's Jack's son, Bruce Jack. Young Harbaugh is Younger Harbaugh. Uh, a little play on words. Is that actually Jim Harbaugh in the picture? Interesting. Looks like it. Uh, where does Jim Harbaugh rank among the best current coaches? 
uh, in college football. Hashtag Michigan. It's another one of these questions that uh, I so we saw earlier. I ear, earmarked it in Slack. Uh, sent Jack a little notes so we can have a takeaway on it. So here's my take on, on this. Right now, I think these three guys here you see on screen, Saban, Kirby Smart, back-to-back national championships, and Davo Sweeney, right? Two national titles for those last two guys. Now, Davo's had a couple down years, right? Those down years are still 11 wins, 10 wins, only two losses, three losses. Okay, a lot of programs, Michigan included, would love to have a two-loss year as your down year. Um, we still got two national titles. Went to four or five straight playoffs, um, uh, three, at least three national championship games, if not four. So I think he's still up there until he has, I think he needs to have two or three more mediocre seasons or down seasons, down playoff seasons. Nick Saban, seven national titles, six at Alabama. That's guaranteed. But after that, I think prior to this year, Ryan Day and, and, uh, and Lincoln Riley were guys that were generally ranked above Harbaugh, but I don't think it's the case anymore. I really think Jim Harbaugh is likely the number four coach in all of college football. A national title, I think, it can with you know the downslope of uh, – of Clemson, I think potentially Harbaugh could be up there with Kirby Smart and Nick Saban, top three with another big time year. Hell, a national title will do it for sure. I think it's supplant uh, Dabo Sweeney at the top three. But right now, I've got Harbaugh on my Mount Rushmore, my top four of all college football coaches. Let me ask you guys, though Jim Harbaugh is the blank best coach in college football right now, right? So put the number with the little uh, numbers at the end, right? So he's the first best coach, right? He's the 10th best coach. He's the fifth. He's the third. Whatever you guys think. Um, I think right now he's number four because he's beat Ryan. Ryan Day probably has a good argument because of his early success. But back-to-back years, Ryan Day's got a losing record against Michigan now. Um, I think Jim Harbaugh has thrust himself back up into that conversation. Definitely top five. I've got him at number four. Let me know what you guys think. I have a couple coming in the live chat. He says, Case and Scott, number five. Mike G says, Yoder, go blue. So thanks a lot for watching. Mike, let me know. Jim Harbaugh is the blank best coach in college football. Dylan Taylor, he says, who is your favorite to be the breakout player of the year? Hmm. Um, good question. I didn't really think about this one to prepare. So let me actually look. Um, we're going to talk about our depth chart here in a few moments. So I want to kind of just think if there's anybody on the defensive side of the ball that I might be missing. I mean, I'd love to say Josiah Stewart from Coastal Carolina, but uh, that might be a tough one. I, here's, here's what I'm going to do. It may not have a breakout because people know his name. I am going to say Mason Graham. I'm going to say the sophomore interior defensive lineman starter, Mason Graham, who was kind of a starter for a lot of times this year, definitely was a big-time contributor at the end of the year. I think he will have an All-American level year this year on the interior defensive lineman. It's going to make you kind of forget about Mozzie Smith and Mike Morris. Obviously, he was in the outside leading mission. I've got Mason Graham, all Big Ten first team, borderline All-American, set up for a huge year in 2024. I think Will Johnson, but people know him. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, I, I love Colson Loveland, and he's had a big year, but I, I think that he, Colson Loveland will end up with like 35, 40 catches. It'll be a much bigger part of the downfield passing game than Michigan's uh, feature from the tight ends since Jake Butt left the program, which is now six seasons ago. Any news on Quorum's recovery? Yeah, there's, I mean, some news. Nothing since our last live show, John, and thank you so much for the super chat earlier on in the live show. Um, Nothing I don't think that's new to uh, to anybody who watched the show last week, but I'll kind of recap where we were and what Blake Corum said himself that I think was news to a lot of people. It was uh, a meniscus tear, right, and, and other things. He had to get multiple things done on his knee and may have actually re-injured it by going back into the game against Illinois, playing a little bit against like, Ohio State. Um, so that's kind of a bummer. I don't think it would have made much of a difference in uh, the Purdue game, and I don't know if they would have you know, put him even in against TCU or whatever it is, but um, – He's going to be out for most of the spring, if not all the spring, and the expectation right now is that he will be ready to go for summer workouts. That's June 1st. So we're looking at a five to six month recovery period here. He had a very extensive knee surgery. Um, part of the reason he came back, even though he wasn't you know, a first round projected pick, third round, maybe second if he was lucky at the end of the year and had some really big showings against Ohio State and the, and the CFP, uh, but that's not what happened. And he wasn't going to be able to participate in pro day, in the combine, anything like that. So he's almost forced to come back to Michigan. And I think if Michigan gives him a little less work and gives more Diamond Edwards, that he could have the kind of season that will prove that he could be a first or second round pick after this year. Question coming in from Mitch Capus or Capus. I apologize if I pronounce it wrong. He says, people dissing Hart as offensive coordinator, as OC. Um, in some ways, right? And I don't know if there's anything that's happened on this front. Uh, is it Mike Carter, he hasn't been named while we've been live the last hour or so, has he? But um, if you're just talking about the speculation that he could be the OC, uh, he's been with the program for two years, kind of running game coordinator, but not a true OC in that regards. I would just say this. 
Um, what other programs are trying to hire Mike Rutkar as your offensive coordinator right now? As far as I know, it's not many. And if they are, it's not programs of the level and caliber of Michigan. Now, he has turned Michigan's running game around. You could say, well, the offensive line's turned around too. So I don't know if you give more credit to Mike Carr, Sean Moore. But um, I don't think Michigan is a place where you've got a team like this coming back in 2023. With, you know, I don't have to repeat the guy's names. I don't think it's a year where you let someone cut their teeth as a play caller or a co-OC. Um, maybe if he's with the program a couple more years, you get to that point where he's proven himself and maybe you give him a half to call games here and there. But as of the team next year, I think Michigan really needs to have somebody come in who could help J.J. McCarthy with the downfield passing game and passing game inside the red zone, which where Michigan has struggled pretty much the entire time that Jim Harbaugh has been their head coach. If you love Michigan football, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We put out the most content. We've got the biggest audience of any show covering this program across any platform, podcast, TV, radio. Um, and you guys can see the numbers. They're all public. Um, we have something like 17,000 viewers per show during the season. That drops off during the off season, But, uh, you know, well upwards of 600, 700,000 uh, you know, viewers per month during the season. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Every subscriber motivates, to do, motivates us to do more programming, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Case and Scott's been all over the live chat. Really appreciate you, my man. Because I got a question for, I got, I got a question. In your opinion, what's the best option for a QB coach? Um, I love uh, T. Martin, right? Uh, T. Martin, who is the uh, quarterback's or wide receiver's coach with the uh, with the Baltimore Ravens right now, mostly because he has worked with the NFL offense and he clearly sees better passing concepts than I think Michigan has. Um, he's been an offensive coordinator in the past, but more than anything, he is a hell of a recruiter. And that's where I think Michigan has – struggled with Matt Weiss in the last couple of years is they have gone two classes without any big, you know, quarterback commits. And in general, couldn't, he shouldn't have closed the deal. Matt Weiss with Jaden Davis. I think T Martin's the kind of guy who can come in, get yourself a big time five-star quarterback in 2024. Hell, a top hundred guy. If Jaden Davis decides to go elsewhere and get the trend going back to where Michigan could backfill JJ McCarthy after this season, potentially, because if McCarthy leaves after the 2023 season to go to the NFL, I think right now, that quarterback room is looking a little sparse for me to get excited going forward unless Michigan gets a transfer portal player into the program. Josh Sherwood. Appreciate you, Josh. Longtime viewer. Uh, also helmet uh, hard hat uh, member is going to go on the uh, the end screen for $10 super chat. Go blue. This is how many, how is the wide receiver room looking for 2023? Um, Jack toss up my wide receiver depth chart from last week's show. Um, I'm not sure what to expect because uh, it's really interesting. Andrew Anthony left the program. Would you be surprised, folks, that I think it was eight of the 14 games Michigan played this year, Andrew Anthony got more snaps than starting wide receiver Roman Wilson? That's surprising to me. What's Darius Clemens? Is he ready to take the next step up, top 100 wide receiver going into his second year at the program? And is Cornelius Johnson going to be the Cornelius Johnson we saw against Ohio State or we saw against Ohio, uh, saw against Purdue, or maybe even saw parts against uh, TCU? Or is, uh, is this Michigan football wide receiver group just going to be a group that gets passes here and there, but uh, for the most part runs poor routes and doesn't really make any big-time plays? And what we saw this past year, this is the first seven, eight games of the year. The balls were downfield. Andrew Anthony had opportunities to make a play. Right? Cornelius Johnson, many opportunities to make a play. Ronnie Bell, butterfingers of time. Great program guy, but this wide receiver group has really struggled. Honestly, since Jim Harbaugh's second year, right? 2016, 2015, those are some good wide receiver groups. They took over Brady Hoke. After that, DPJ, Nico Collins, Tariq Black, those guys are supposed to be superstars. They struggled. And since then, you know, it's an iffy group for Michigan. So uh, some excitement. Uh, look to see what we get from the young guys. But as of now, um, I, I am going to be a prove it kind of guy for me. I want to see it before I'm going to put any stock into what this wide receiver group can do, even with a guy like J.J. McCarthy behind center at quarterback. All right, we asked this question last week. Uh, I want to kind of get, take another poll because I was surprised by the answer, right? You're down a score. You're down six points, let's say. Six points. There's two and a half minutes left. You need to score to win the game. It's against Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan State, whoever it is, bowl game. Which quarterback are you put in there? J.J. McCarthy's had the opportunity to do it one time in his career, and he did it uh, kind of without Blake Corum, without Diamond Edwards, against Illinois. Quite a few uh, field goal tries. But Denard Robinson did it a bunch of times. Notre Dame multiple times, Indiana multiple times, and others. One drive, one score needed to win. 
DR for Denard Robinson or JJ McCarthy, who would be your Michigan football quarterback? Let's see what you guys are thinking in the live chat and down in the comments if you're watching this video on Thursday. Let me know who your guy is. Michigan football's two minute drill quarterback, JJ McCarthy or Denard Robinson. And if you haven't yet, follow me on Twitter. I'll put my Twitter link in the live chat, and it's down in the comments and the description of today's show right there in the live chat. It's at James Yoder. Make sure you guys are following me. I tweet every single day about Michigan football, and I make a lot of jokes on the Ohio State Buckeyes and their failures under Just For Men bearded coach Ryan Day. 